Welcome to Flat, Cool, and Acid Free, an OK State Archives podcast, bringing you stories about Oklahoma State University and Oklahoma. I'm Nina Thornton, multimedia producer for the OSU Libraries. On this episode, David Peters and I recreate the sightseeing tour of 1965. In 1965, a group of Oklahoma A&M graduates from the class of 1915 gathered on campus to celebrate their 50th anniversary. On May 22, 1965, a bus carried the group through Greater Stillwater and into the heart of Oklahoma A&M, showing the relationship between the town and the campus. Weldon Barnes, Director of Public Information, led the tour. David Peters, head of the archives at Oklahoma State University, looked over the transcript of the tour and a map of Stillwater and charted out a modern day path to recreate the adventure. Our tour will take place over two episodes of Flat, Cool, and Acid Free. The Stillwater Sightseeing Tour of 1965 Part 1 highlights the greater Stillwater area and then takes you into what was then a developing Oklahoma State University. The Stillwater Sightseeing Tour of 1965 Part 2 picks up where Part 1 left off in the heart of campus and will take you to Boone Pickens Stadium, through student housing, agriculture points of interest, and then into Greek life before returning back to the Alumni Center. If you'd like to navigate along with us using Google Maps, visit bit.ly forward slash flat cool acid free. If you're driving along this route with us today, I will share that it will be helpful to have a navigator with you to help pause the audio should you get a bit ahead or behind. And always remember, safety first. Now let's get to the tour. Part one of the tour starts at the ConocoPhillips OSU Alumni Center at 201 South Hester Street in Stillwater, Oklahoma, 74078. Use the map and GPS coordinates at bit.ly forward slash flat cool acid free to find the starting point. Link is in the show notes. All right, we are here for flat cool and acid free and we are currently sitting in the Conoco Phillips OSU Alumni Center parking lot. And this is where we're gonna start our tour. Let's give us some background. What are we doing today, David? So originally in 1965, Weldon Barnes gave a tour for the 1915 graduates. So this was 50 years after they graduated. He's taking them on a tour, uh, showing them places uh, that they hopefully will remember and then showing what's there now uh, and newer establishments that have gone in since they've uh, since they've left 50 years ago. Uh, Stillwater has changed quite a bit. And so part of it is a promotional tour of Stillwater, uh, but then a lot of it is just to have them see the growth and development uh, of Stillwater and, and compared to what they remembered when they were here 50 years earlier. So we are looking at a tour for a class from 1915, and they are in the tour in 1965, and then we are in the tour in 2021. So many layers. <laughs> yes. And what we're going to try to do is both describe what the tour would have been like as they remembered the areas in 1915, what they were seeing in 1965, and then maybe give a little update to what we are seeing today. So we are trying to follow the initial part of the tour fairly closely to what they did in 1965. After about the middle of the tour, what they saw in 65, we're gonna make some modifications to it um, because it's just uh, a little unrealistic today to, to take the whole extent of the tour. But we can have maps for both the original tour and the tour that we're taking today to show them um, what we're seeing. So again, we are starting. If you are in the ConocoPhillips OSU Alumni Center parking lot, you're in the right place. We are facing the McKnight Center Performing Arts. Um, and we are on the corner of University and Hester. Perfect. Right. Now we're starting slightly different than they started. They started close to here, but they started at what was the Student Union parking lot. Um, 
this was, I think, right before the student union parking garage went up. So, you know, they were right here by Bennett Chapel, and they were just on the other side of Bennett Chapel when they started their tour. So we are taking a right on University, passing the McKnight Center on the left. And in 65, they would have seen some fraternities along here, um, but they were removed uh, later on. Uh, and uh, Weldon Barnes really didn't talk much about University, at least on this trip through. As you notice, several times we will pass through similar neighborhoods, and we're going to take a left going south onto Washington Street. So for the graduates of 1915, the area south of campus was on Washington Street were simply residences. There were a few houses uh, within the next three blocks uh, before we get to 6th Street, um, and that's all they would have remembered, uh, just a few homes that would have been located along uh, this section of Washington. By 1965, the Alpha Gamma Rho Fraternity House uh, was built. Uh, there were several restaurants, the Patio Restaurant. There was Osborne Studio and Camera Shop along here. Uh, there was a Ruthie's uh, Designs for clothes. Uh, there were three barber shops uh, within, this, <laughs> within this block by of 65. Uh, there were a number of insurance agencies. Uh, there was also the Coachman Restaurant and Rogers Bakery, uh, Dewey's Pizza Parlor. Uh, there was a drugstore and Colonial Florist. Uh, John Patton had his dentist office here. Uh, there was the Varsity, the Corner, and the RJ Cleaner, so three cleaning uh, establishments. There was Dooley's Cafe, Carp's Bowling Alley, there was a shoe shop, Audio Sounds, uh, Aggie Barbecue, and then on the corner of 6th in Washington was Cymac Frozen Foods. We're going to take a left here going east on uh, 6th Street. Perfect. Between 1950 and 1965, as Washington Street became, uh, be actually began becoming the Strip, okay. uh, with businesses being filled along the Strip. Now in 65, at this corner of, of 6th and uh, Washington Street, they would have seen the Humpty Dumpty Grocery Store. Um, Mini Stillwater. Well, it's now Sprouts. Many Stillwater residents remember that as the IGA uh, on the corner of Washington and Sixth, and it's now Sprouts. So, just a reminder: we are on the corner of Sixth and Washington. We are at the light. We are taking a left on Sixth or Fifty One. Fifty One, and heading heading east. So now we're looking for Husband Street. So we've got a little stretch here. Okay. Um, Weldon Barnes was talking about how city was, Stillwater was a city of churches. And so he's he was pointing out um, up ahead here the Roman Catholic Church, uh, St. Francis, uh, and there was a school associated with it. Uh, there was also the Mormon Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, that building is now a part of the Methodist uh, Church. It's part of the Methodist Student Center. Um, and then the Presbyterian Church uh, was located uh, just across the street. Um, it's still located there today. Um, and then a little Evangelical Brethren Church was just across from the Presbyterian Church. And that's the building where classes were first held uh, when the campus was established in uh, 1891. Um, oh, awesome. So, uh, let's see what else here. Just along this street, um, you know, there were these, these churches, there were a number of businesses. Um, and then at Husband here, we're going to turn right, uh, going south, uh, as you pass the, the Payne County Courthouse. And that would have been here in 65 uh, as a new facility. Um, uh, the original wood uh, structure that they may have remembered, I think, had burned uh, in the meantime. Oh, really? But in 1915, it would have been that original wood it structure? Was, yeah, and it would have been at the same location. Along Husband Street would have been a law offices right across from the courthouse. And I think there may have been a few churches along this area, too. Let's see. And then we're going to go on 8th Street. So this is 7th. Uh, there's also real estate agencies along here. Uh, the, the, paint, uh, the Stillwater... Uh, Postal Plaza, or the post office, was, was on their right. Let's see, now we're going to turn left, or going east on 8th Avenue, and we're going to go to Main Street. Was the news press there? When, do you know when the news press was? The news press was there in 65. Okay. Yeah. So now we're heading east on 8th Avenue, and we're going to go to Main Street, and... Um, on our right is the First National Bank and Trust Company. And then we're going to turn on Main Street. 
Let's see which way we're going to head south. We're going right on Main. And along this block um, would have been the Holt Jewelry Store, uh, Bishop's Clothing, uh, Rexall Drug Store. Um, there was another drug and sundry store, Grover Scheidler. Had an upstairs uh, studio. This is another photograph studio. Mm -hmm. On that third floor. On, and on the third floor, uh, they used to have dances. Um, in 65, uh, along here was Tyser's uh, photo studio, a paint store, Murphy's, uh, Fenton's office supply, uh, real estate agencies, uh, Weir Appliances, Newton Wall, Royal Cafe, uh, more barber shops. It was as uh, bustling as it is uh, today, yes, huh? Yes, a skiing cafeteria. Uh, George's Cozy Corner, uh, <laughs> Jurgens Weir Appliance. Uh, at this corner now, we're going to turn left. Um, it's now the, the Nichols uh, Hotel is at this corner of uh, 10th and Main. Uh, when they were here, well, when they were here in 1915, it would have been the Rains Hotel at this corner. Uh, so now we're going to head left going east. Uh, along 10th Street here. If you get confused at that roundabout, we are actually just passing uh, Mike's Auction. So if you don't see Mike's Auction on your left, or Lee Windows, I believe, Windows and Doors yes. on the right, um, we will give you a minute to kind of locate that one. And Lee Company would have been here in uh, 1965 also, and it's still there today. Very cool. On 10th Street, would have gone straight to the, the train depot, uh, and there was a uh, parking lot on the west side of the train depot, so 10th Street connected to that, but that no longer connects to the train depot. So we're going to have to adjust the tour and go back to 9th Street. Okay. Uh, and with tiny paws on your right, we're going to turn right on 9th Street. So this section of 9th Street is the last section of Stillwater with brick, uh, a brick street. Uh, most of Stillwater in 1915, at least around downtown, would have had brick streets just like this. Cool. Uh, but this little portion of 9th Street is the last section that they've been able to maintain as a brick street. Now, did they just do this out of nostalgia, or it, are they just kind of keeping it up? They're, they're keeping it out of nostalgia. Yeah. Um, um, so... Okay, we are going to pull over here. So, it is the Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma National Headquarters, but it used to be. David, tell us a little bit about this. So, it was the Stillwater Train Depot. And so, this is where most students, uh, especially the students who graduated in 15, would have come to campus, uh, arriving at the Stillwater Train Station, uh, and then they would have taken various uh, livery or, or kind of their version of taxi services to get to campus. Uh, and so they could they could arrive at the train depot. Actually, these livery services would just wait here and see if any students or anyone was arriving, no matter where they were going, and then it would take them to the main part of campus, which is actually quite a little little jog from here. So it was a Stillwater train depot. Uh, by 1965, there wasn't any uh, train passenger traffic anymore. It was a freight depot, so they were still stopping here, um, but there wasn't any passengers on board. And so in 1915, though, some students even walked from here all the way to campus. Holy moly. Uh, so, you know, they, they didn't think much of, of walking that far. I guess it depends on how much luggage you were carrying. Right. Uh, so if you just arrived for the beginning of the semester, you probably had trunks with you. You probably waited for the livery service. Um, but if you'd just gone gone away for the weekend or something and come back, then you probably just walked. Or took, Fantastic. Took a taxi. So, now, when did they buy this, the national head, the fraternity headquarters? It's been at least 15, 20 years ago that okay. it's now been serving as the Kappa Kappa Psi Tau Beta Sigma uh, National Headquarters. Uh, and they, what was it, a year or two ago, they had a, well, it must have been two years ago, established 1919. So they had their 100th anniversary uh, okay. of Kappa Kappa Psi. Uh, now, do they campus. do tours of this at all, or it's closed off to the public? I think they're, if you contact them, if you call them beforehand, um, I think I, I've heard that they're, they're you know, if, if it's possible, they'll mm -hmm. have people, they'll allow people to come in and kind of look around a little bit. That's fantastic. Um, so, um, and for a while there, before it was uh, the headquarters for Kappa Kappa Psi, uh, it was, they tried to make it a restaurant for a while. I'm not sure why why it didn't work, but um, it was a restaurant temporarily. Uh, and now it's now uh, national headquarters for Kappa Kappa Psi, Chow Bay Sigma. Perfect. So, so if you are just catching up, we are at the old Stillwater Train Depot. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and we are getting ready to take off again. Just a little bit of a stop. I might mention two of delivery services from 1915 were Al Shively's uh, bus uh, that had seats around the outside uh, of his uh, kind of carriage. And then there was Meyer's livery uh, stable um, that also carried people to campus or people would walk. So now we're back on 9th Street and we've turned left going west and we're heading back to Main Street. Um, so we're on the brick, brick walk here for a little bit. past the National Guard Armory, which was on our left. Um, and now we've arrived at, at Lewis Avenue. We're still gonna keep going uh, west, um, but uh, there was a opera house, uh, kind of where the antique mall is now. Uh, there was a fire station uh, near this corner that they would remember from 1915 by 1965, it would it had been moved. Um, There's a Re Rebecca Lodge. Um, there was a furniture store, a Dodge dealership on the corner, um, and then there was the um, uh, Casco. We're gonna turn right, going north on Main Street, and we'll right. go one block before turning left again, going to Cats, which is on the corner of Seventh and Main. Uh, they used to have dances on the top floor of Cats, and now we're gonna turn left going west on 7th street would that have been where granny's was is now yes it's where okay. granny's is now um, and then along here was the milam hotel uh, which housed college men in 1965 and what's there now is that the the town center i think it's or... i think it was on the corner back there Oh, interesting. So the one that's being yeah, refurbished right, right now for something. Okay. Uh, they talk about how they passed uh, the First Baptist Church on their left. Which is still there. Which is still there. Perfect. And then um, uh, and we're going to keep going to Duck Street, but at the corner of uh, Duncan and 7th Street is was the first Church of Christ Scientist, which is now the um, Stillwater History Museum at the Sherrar. And then a, a guy named Keith Fellows lived along here, which uh, was owned now by the Methodist Church in 65. But in 1915, apparently these uh, students were remembered Keith Fellows living along here. So we're going to hmm. turn right going north on Duck Street. Uh, we pass the Methodist uh, Church, uh, which is on our left. And then Dot Painter uh, in 1915 would have had a house along here. And I guess apparently they would have known dot it was a smaller Painter. class back then it was it was a smaller <laughs> class so now we're heading uh, north on duck street and we are on the corner of duck and six if you are following along and we're heading to third avenue so today we have the Payne county courthouse edition uh, on our right presbyterian church is still here at this corner uh, there's a gas station uh, on, the, on the northwest corner what road are we looking for next? We are looking for 3rd Avenue. 3rd Avenue. Are we going to be taking a left going... Taking a left going west, west on 3rd. Most of this on Duck Street would have been residential, even in 1965. A few apartments, but mostly residential along here. Uh, we still have some homes, but there are also law offices, real estate. And the YMCA. <laughs> and the YMCA. <laughs> So we will be going west on 3rd, taking a left off of Duck Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they mentioned at this corner was a gentleman named Willis Cray who had a house here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if that house still exists or not. Um, 
in the 1915 tour, uh, they mention uh, the St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, which is still there. It's on, on our right. And in 65, the hideaway would have been across the street on our left. It's now a coffee house, I think, operated by the University Heights Church. Uh, there also would have been a barber shop and a laundry. Now we're going to turn right on Knobloch and head north towards the fire station. And if we can stop here for just a brief moment. Sure. We are going to pull over. So we are facing the Stillwater Fire Department. We're just going to pull over in one of these parking spaces. So for the tour in 65, they would have mentioned uh, to the students how from 1915, this is where they would have gotten their first really view of the main campus area. Uh, and so in 1915, there was a gateway that entered where the fire station is now. There was a big gate there and a drive and it was a circular drive that then went circled past old central um on the on the to our right here um in 1915 there was just a wood frame building uh, that had uh, kind of a little restaurant in it uh, that operated by the peck brothers by 1965 actually in the 1920s the peck brothers there were three of them built the Peck's Lodge, which is still there today. Um, along uh, the Iron Gate, um, then there was a hedge of tamarack and honeysuckle. Um, and then at the fire station, which is there, was there in 65, uh, they talked about how it was a uh, united effort between the city, the college, uh, and the state and federal government. So they got funding from all four uh, to develop a, a fire station at the corner. And that's uh, we began our um, fire training program started at this fire station. Um, we'd had a number of fires uh, in 1914, 1915 when this class was graduating. Um, and so they would have been aware of the importance for fire training. And so that's why the fire training was established on campus at this corner. Now, those fires of 1914, how quickly did they rebuild? Would the 1915 class, would they have seen those buildings at its, at their worst? They would have seen them at their worst. Okay. Uh, it took them a year or more to get everything back in order. So both Morrill Hall was completely gutted by fire. Uh, and then the Bartlett Center, uh, we call it the Bartlett Center now, but it was uh, the domestic science. Um, it's where the with women's residence hall. It also took uh, about a year to, to be reestablished. There, uh, the bottom two floors were mainly intact. The third floor had significant damage. The fourth floor was virtually gone. And so it took a while to, to get the funding then to rebuild them. But in 1965, they certainly would have been there. They would have been back uh, up and running. Yep. And if you want to learn more about the fires of 1914, there is a video on YouTube. Go check that out. We'll put a link in the description. So along here, uh, this little section of Knobloch had now, uh, well, by, in, in 1915, it had begun to be a little business district, uh, like the Peck Brothers on the corner. Um, but along here in 65 would have been Smith's Bookstore, a college grocery and market. Uh, Bates Brother was a clothing store. Nina's was a clothing store. Uh, TG and Y a grocery store was along here. Uh, there was a college drug store. Hans Sporting Goods, uh, the Huts, uh, uh, Harold's Menswear was also along Knobloch. Uh, there were apartments. Uh, Dameron Ag it was called the Dameron Aggie Studio, which was another photograph studio. Okay. Uh, boys, people seem to love photographs. And then uh, there was another barber shop. Uh, there was the Cowboy Shoe Shop, uh, and then the Campus Theater on the corner of Knobloch and uh, University. Uh, it's where the hideaway is now um, located, their, their extension to the to the north. Uh, and then also at this corner was the Big 8 Cafe. I think we're ready to roll. All right, so. So we're going to turn left or going west on University Avenue, and we're just going one block. Okay. Uh, Weldon Barnes made a point of saying this was University Avenue. Of course, the 1915 graduate would have known it as College Avenue because um, they were here before we changed to Oklahoma State University in 1956-57. So to their north, uh, to our, our right, um, they would have seen Old Central. And we're taking a right. And we're taking a Hester. right here going north uh, on Hester. Uh, they would have seen the Old Library. Um, which by 65 had been renamed Wilhelm Williams Hall. Um, and then in this little corner here, the old uh, college quadrangle was the 1915 class cannon. The class gave a cannon to the university as a class project. And there would have been the stone bench uh, that some people may still be familiar with yeah. uh, on uh, over by the fire station. That was a memorial from the class of 1913. Let's see. 
been along here, they would have stopped for a brief period. Um, they would have seen Bennett Chapel, uh, the communications building, uh, which we now call the Paul Miller uh, building. We're going to take it right on We're going to take it right here. Um, but this section of Hester, they would have seen, uh, they would remember the old site of the chemistry building, uh, but that had been torn down. Um, and then at this corner here, you had Gunderson, which was an engineering building, and they would have stopped along here. Can we pull off? Yeah, absolutely. We are just going to pull over right um, where David was talking about Gunderson used to be, but to the left, you will see Morrill Hall and what was the old business building, which is now a classroom building, really? Well, but even in 65, they wouldn't have seen that building. This, oh, interesting. So this is why they stopped here is, is Dean Swearingen, who was the dean of business, talks to them about the new business building, which is going on this corner. So Gunderson is still here, the old engineering building. Across the street was another shops and engineering building they were getting ready to tear down. Um, and so that they would have known it as an engineering corner here. Uh, the power station, which used to be where Gunderson is, moved in 1911, 1912. So when they first got here as freshmen, the power station moved from where Gunderson is now and was in, in 65 to across the street to where the classroom building is. Oh, okay. Uh, and so he, he was pointing out the kind of the engineering changes on this corner uh, from 1915 to 1965, uh, but also promoting the new business building, which was going in um, right here at this corner, just, just west of Morrill Hall. Uh, but the other part of this little quadrangle um, would have stayed much the same. Morrill Hall was still here. Uh, the women's dormitory, or now Bartlett Center, was here. The old auditorium uh, was here. It's before the Saratine Center. It was was refashioned around it. Um, you know, Old Central was here. Uh, there was the, 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 the second library building uh, was still located uh, kind of where the Conical Phillips is now. Um, so um, and with the, with the old library or Williams Hall uh, being down at this at that corner just north of where the fire station is, this area would have been very familiar to them um, even in 1965 from their experiences in 1915. So the business building has had quite a few changes. Yes, yes. And at the time, in 1965, business was occupying Morrill Hall. And so oh. uh, they were, you know, as soon as they got out, then English began moving into Morrill Hall. Okay. Uh, but in 1965, um, a business or, um, came out of Commerce, School of Commerce, uh, was in Morrill Hall, but they were waiting for their new building to be constructed. And it was completed uh, within a few years after this. And we are on our way, so, so we are yeah, starting so Morrill to Hall, in. Um, they also would have looked back to, to their... Um, would have been their left uh, to the west. There was an old barn uh, which was located roughly where the parking lot is between uh, Whitehurst uh, and Willard Hall. Uh, they would have seen uh, Whitehurst Hall uh, looking back to the west uh, where the administration uh, was now. Um, in, in 1915, uh, the administration was located in Morrill Hall. So okay, we are we're gonna, on the corner of Knobloch and University. Yes. So we're going to turn right. Yes. So we're going. We're going south on Knobloch. We're going back to University Avenue. Okay. Um, now along Knobloch here, um, class of 1915 would have remembered the home of Mr. Wilson, uh, which was uh, on the uh, east side of Knobloch. Uh, Apparently used to have teas there for a number of the bachelor professors. And let's see, uh, there was also the home of Nip James who lived along here. Um, and of course, then Williams Hall would have been on their right, uh, the old library. Uh, that was torn down within three or four years after this tour, so it didn't last much longer. Okay, now we're going to turn right going west on University Avenue. And we're going to go all the way down to Monroe Street. On um, their left, uh, they would have seen... Uh, Dr. Gunderson's old home uh, in the alley behind the movie house. Uh, and then they referred to this section of university now in 1965 as Fraternity Row. And this is Hester and University, right where the McKnight Center is. Yes. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay, so Fraternity Row started around here. Started here. Okay. So Delta Chi would have had their house along here. This is beyond the, on the south side of University Avenue. Theta Chi had their house here. Uh, and then the Methodist Student Center, which has been, uh, uh, well, they have a whole new building, but it's located at the same uh, location at the corner of University and Washington Street. 
uh, would have been on their left. Uh, and then across the street from that uh, is the Sigma New House, which is still located there today. Um, they stopped here to look at the formal gardens. Looking north would have been your, your first view of the fabulous Edmund Lowe Library. The Edmund Lowe Library. Yeah. Look at that. So, um, let's see, behind Sigma New was uh, Fritz Redlich's house. Oh. Uh, Fritz was a part of the architecture uh, department. He was one of the faculty members there. Uh, the Lambda Chi Alpha House, the Zeta Tau Alpha House, which is still located where it is today. And then at the corner here, uh, which is now a uh, fraternity, uh, used to be the Baptist Student Center. Now we're going to turn right going north on Monroe Street. So across the street um, on Monroe uh, would be the southwest corner uh, was the Sigma Chi House, and it's still the Sigma Chi House today. So now, now we're entering... <laughs> The main portion of campus that you can kind of drive through. Okay. And most of this would have been new to them. In, in 1915, most of this area out here, outside of Theta Pond, were pastures and, and, and crop uh, production areas. Um, and so all the development that would have occurred in the 50 years to them would be brand new. They would, you know, this was all West Agricultural Campus. So this is about to blow their minds. Well. If they haven't been back to campus in 50 years, yes. Okay. Um, and that's another thing that, that uh, Weldon Barnes is is uh, trying to impress upon them, the dramatic changes uh, on campus. So now, you know, when they were here in 1915, there was two residence halls, and now there's a there's just a whole bir series of them. Um, on their left, uh, it's now the School of Social Sciences and Humanities, I believe, but that's um, uh, there was a major residence hall, uh, and then the north wing to that, uh, on their right would have been uh, Willard Hall, uh, which was a women's dormitory. Um, then back behind that would have been uh, Whitehurst, which is still there today. Uh, the College Infirmary, which is on our left. Um, it was the first building on campus with uh, an elevator. Uh, and then behind that, they talked about the two new um, dormitories. Uh, it was part of the Scott Parker Wentz Complex. They were under construction, so it was it wasn't it was only about two or three floors high at this time. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so they were still that was still under construction, uh, and they were still in the planning stages for. And we're going to want to turn uh, right going back east on Athletic Avenue. Okay. Um, but on their left would have been uh, the new home home economics uh, building that had two wings. And even in 1965, they were talking about how they were going to add a third wing. Well, that was just added within the last, you know, 10 years now. And so that wing took almost 50 years to be added. But they but, still knew it was going to happen, But they knew it was going to be added uh, okay. in 1965. So we are approaching a small parking lot, and we are going to stop here for a moment, correct? That's correct. Perfect. So, so pull over by yeah. physical sciences will probably be the easiest place uh, to pull over in this little fire lane. And let's chat. So, so what do we see here? So in 1965, Athletic Avenue would have gone straight through here. So they would have gone all the way past. The library would have been on their right. Uh, physical sciences would have been on their left. And then if they continued past the library, there would have been a small cafeteria. There would have been the police uh, station, which was a kind of a cinder block building. Uh, there would have been engineering uh, north, engineering south. There would have been industrial engineering. Um, so there was. this is where the engineering complex had kind of moved to uh, by 1965. But Ath Athletic Avenue used to go straight through here, uh, and that wasn't closed until, I think, in the 70s. Uh, so in 65, they still would have been able to go through. Uh, but all of this would have been new to them. Um, uh, all of these, all of these, you know, four or five-story buildings with classrooms and, and laboratories and the library would have all been uh, new and different for them. Um, and so it would have been quite a dramatic change um, yeah, based on what their experience was. Because this all would have been fields and pastures when they were students. That's insane. Um, so who was implementing all of this change at that time? So by 65, uh, Oliver Wilhelm is our president. Um, and what he really did is he inherited <clears throat> both the campus and the master plan that Bennett had devised in 1928. Uh, Bennett and Phil Wilbur have worked together on the master plan. Um, Bennett, of course, dies in 51. Um, Willem is named in the, the next president, and he really kind of finishes the plan um, and, and begins to make modifications to it. By 65, though, 
his, his uh, reign is about to end. Uh, he steps down within a year, and we have a new president. So this is about the end of the Wilhelm period. Interesting. <clears throat> and this is really when the university, it looks like, or it sounds like, when the university really started growing was that Bennett era. <laughs> and then... It began to develop. Yeah, the foundation was set during the Bennett era. By 65, what we're beginning to see is the baby boom let. Okay. So remember, there was the baby boom. Right after World War uh, II, 20 years later now, at 65, from 45 to 65, all of those baby boomers are now starting to come to college. And so that's why there's a dramatic expansion on campus, not only of uh, classrooms, laboratories, offices, but residence halls and a number of different styles of residence halls. You know, in the past, it was assumed that students would be 18 to 20 year olds. Now we've got married students. We've got, we've got a, a larger number of undergraduates that are of that age group, uh, 18 to 20, uh, but they've, they've got more variety for residence halls on campus. In the old days, you just had residence halls for single. That's why they're gonna talk about residence halls a little bit more later on in the tour.